So here are a bunch of uh, Nordic semiconductor chips right here. Yeah. They are so these are Cortex M0? These are with embedded Cortex M0, yeah. And uh, tons of flash and uh, all kinds of... Tons of flash? Yeah. So, um, so... It comes in different versions, it comes in different packages and we have different flash, flash sizes, 128 or 256k flash, so and 16 and 32k of RAM. So let's uh, go over there, the, the, you're showing some... You're showing, uh, what are you showing here? Is this running it? So this is uh, our uh, IoT demo, <laughs> we are demoing uh, IPv6 packets on YouTube Smart, and we do the obvious thing as brewing coffee, which everyone likes. Everything. All right, so uh, we are basically so sen sending IPv6 packets over Bluetooth to connection intervals. So this is pretty special, no? It is. How do you make it happen? Uh, well, we are using a Raspberry Pi router. We are sending the package from there and it's connected to the internet as you see. Yeah. And yeah. since this doesn't have a Bluetooth Smart uh, embedded, we need to just a small dongle and we're sending it from there to uh, right. We're an ultra low power company, which is a semiconductor company. And so it says ultra low power wireless solutions. Yes. So we are making radio chips that makes um, devices talk to, for example, your mobile phone wireless. So is it Bluetooth? Bluetooth Smart, Bluetooth Smart or AND technology or 2.4 gigahertz. So you do uh, uh, con con uh, yeah. communication yeah. stuff? Yes, communication. So in all of these, there's your chips? All of these devices in different areas, different segments yeah, have our chip. And, uh, and who are you? My name is Torben Overbeck. I've been with Nordic Semiconductor for about six years. I've been working in the applications and support group. I've also been doing some work with the sales team in the US. I lived there for about two years. So I have some experience with sales, also with technical support, and uh, basically acting as a bridge between the customer and our R&D team in uh, Norway. So what do the customers want? Well, they want to make something, and they want to make it as easy as possible, of course. Uh, and we try to make the process of using Nordic as simple as possible. So you're helping all these guys? Yeah, more or less. I mean, uh, wireless is a very wide field, right? And low power, low cost is our uh, focus, and that's something that a lot of people want. You do just wireless stuff, or do you do the main uh, uh, processor in some of the devices? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, we do the total package, basically. You have a processor, you have a radio, and you have all your normal peripherals, like SPI, UART, so that you can connect to external sensors and use our chip as a master processor in a bigger design. So these are processors. Uh, in the very proximity of the yeah. How much do they cost? <laughs> well, it depends on volume. So if you go on DigiKey and you just buy a single chip, it's maybe going to be around three dollars. If you buy a bigger volume, maybe you get down to two dollars, maybe even less. But uh, it all depends on the volume. It depends on what chip you're buying, and it yeah depends on manufacturers. So I can't really give an exact number for that, unfortunately. And so uh, Nordic is always, uh, is not only wireless or is it mostly? Yeah, ultra low power for, uh, sorry, ultra low power wireless is our main focus and that is one of our strengths, I think. So uh, we're quite a small company and we focus on a very sort of uh, specialized thing. So what's going on down there? Well, these are all actually the same chip, uh, but it's just different module manufacturers that take our chip and they put it into different types of uh, modules. So, uh, where do they go? Well, many customers they don't want to design their own hardware. They don't want to design the PCB. They just want to buy an off-the-shelf module, and then they can go to all these guys and uh, get the module depending on the requirements. So, for example, the Raytag, what does it do? So, I don't know the Raytag specifically. You know this one of them, like uh, one of them could go in a coffee machine, for example. Yeah, it could very easily. Like Laird, uh, one of their things is that they have this smart basic interface. They call it. It means that you program the module through basic. And uh, I don't really know basic much, but if some customer wants to use basic, then they can go with layers. They want to use something else, they should pick a different module. So how do you do the, this IPv6 solution? Well, what we are doing is that... 
I mean, we are not the first guys to do. You want me over here? Yeah. This IPv6 there. All uh, oh, right. <laughs> yeah. What is this? Sorry, behind you. What is that? Well, what we are doing is that uh, the Internet of Things is the big new thing right now, and this relies on IPv6. Because what IPv6 allows you to do is to address a lot more devices than what you can today with IPv4. And we are not the first guys to do IPv6, but our specialty is low power. So we want to show how you can do IPv6 nodes, something like this small beacon over here. Let's Sorry. check it out there. Yeah. yeah. There's and, a small uh, beacon right here. And this small beacon you can actually connect to the internet. And it uses very little power, it uses a small battery, and still you can have months if not years of battery life. And I think that's what we're bringing to the IPv6 game, is that we're using our specialty within low power radios. Can I see the battery? Yeah, this is the battery. So this one coin cell for how many years? Uh, you won't be able to do years on a coin cell of this size. If you want to do years, you probably need something a bit bigger like a CR2032, which has about double the capacity of this coin cell. This is a 1632, it's got about 130 milliamp hour. So with this, maybe half a year, something in that ballpark. And uh, so your little ARM Cortex M0 Plus is there? Yeah, it is. It's got the processor, it's got the radio and all the peripherals. Actually, you even have 10 GPIO pins. Maybe it's hard to see, you have these uh, pads here. So you could actually connect this to exter external sensors and hardware as well, if you would like. And this also uses our unique DFU solution that allows you to update the firmware over the air from a smartphone. Nice. What's this one? This one? Uh, this is actually... Let me see if I can get the demo running here. Ah, oh, crap. So this is actually showing... Uh, this is a Bluetooth smart remote. It's connected to a standard Android phone using the HID or GAT BLE profile. Uh, we do a uh, mouse or touchpad, we do the full QWERTY keyboard. And one thing that's a bit cool is that we also do uh, voice over Bluetooth Low Energy, which is quite unique. So I can now give it speech commands. What is the weather in Barcelona? And then, so other people don't do over Bluetooth Low Energy? or I haven't seen voice over Bluetooth Low Energy. Well, I know they people... They switch to a higher-end Bluetooth, so what do they do? They typically use classic Bluetooth, which is a higher power, higher data rate uh, protocol. And for, for CD quality audio, you shouldn't use this. This is mainly for voice quality audio. So it's reduced data rate and, of course, much lower power consumption than What standard. data rate are you doing? Uh, the audio stream is uh, compressed from 64 kilobit per second down to 32 kilobits per second. And are then that's transmitted over here. Are you in the Internet of Things? Uh, you mean if Nordic is? Yeah, you're doing a bunch of stuff <laughs> for that. Yeah, sure. Uh, I don't know exactly what's being shown up here. I, I think this is the Internet of Things uh, server being configured right now. And uh, ask us how to do smart home, medical, lifestyle, beacon, toys. Well, that's a lot of things at the same time, but a good place to start is to get the Nordic 51 A22 device, which is a very flexible device with the ARM Cortex and can pretty much do all of these things, given the right software, of course. And you're based in Norway? Yeah. We have the main R&D office in Trondheim in Norway, sort of in the middle of the country. We also have a sales and marketing office in Oslo, which is the capital of Norway. And other people don't do this kind of IPv6 over Bluetooth systems? Well, I'm sure they will be, but we are one of the first in the market to integrate this in the Bluetooth Low Energy solution. So we want to be there from the start, and of course this technology is going to keep growing for the next couple of years, and we want to be a part of that, and of course... There will be beacons everywhere? There will be, for they sure. They already are starting to be? Yeah, I mean, I've he heard that Nordic Power is the beacons used for location finding in this uh, conference, so we're already starting to get into these beacons around this place and So you're shipping a few of these processors? Oh yes, I mean, we sell about half a million chips every day, so the volumes are pretty high. Uh, I won't say that everyone is going to be 51, because we have all the products as well, of course. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, wireless is going everywhere, and the volumes are getting higher and higher for sure. Are those different chips? Uh, this is the 51.8, or actually this is the 51.4.22, which also supports AMP which is a different protocol used mostly for sports and fitness applications. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi running the Internet of Things demo. And uh, this is basically our main development platform. And what I want to say about that is just that it's an all-in-one development solution. You've got this chip that does the debugging. This is the Nordic chip over here. 
all the components within the white square are sort of the minimum amount of components you need. You have buttons, LEDs, connectors for all the GPIO on this chip. In total it's uh, 31 GPIO pins that you can access from these headers. And one nice uh, thing about this is that it's, sorry, it's uh, Arduino compatible. So you can just get an off-the-shelf Arduino shield plug it into our kit, write the driver for it, and then you can use it. And this is uh, embed? Yeah, that's true. So this also integrates with ARM embed. And it basically allows you to switch between embed or the Nordic uh, SDK, uh, as you need to. So you just get one kit, and you can do whatever you like, really. There's cool. also a UART connection to the PC, so we can do like console output and show strings and stuff like that. Nice, so you're going to be uh, busy, you're busy, and you're going to be more and more busy with the Internet of Things coming up? Oh yes, we get more and more busy all the time, which is why we keep hiring more and more people. In Norway or other places? Uh, all over, actually. We just opened a big office in Finland, Ulu. It's about 60, 70 people uh, to sort of expand our R&D resources. Uh, and we did this because Nokia and uh, some of these other guys have been firing a lot of people lately. So it's all this talent out in the market. We need more people. So we thought we'll start an office there to, yeah, to simply get more R&D resources as well. Nice. And Thread, uh, security over the IP, uh, over their Internet of Things, everything yeah, is working mean, out, right? Right now we don't have security in this demo because we just haven't had the time yet to get there. But of course we're looking into these uh, things, we know that security is critical for this uh, going forward. So we'll be working with these guys doing security and try to uh, sort of find an established standard and uh, get it working on our devices. So pretty clever guys in Norway. We have and some yes good people. Yesterday I saw the world champion of chess right here. Right, that's he true. He was at your booth. He, he was, was playing people. Yeah. No, I mean we think that the chess uh, is sort of, it's similar to what we do. He's a Norwegian guy, he's doing something very clever. He's the best in his field. Are you sponsoring him? Yeah, we basically have a deal with him. Uh, well, when you see when he's playing chess, you got the Nordic logo on his shoulder. And uh, he's doing some things with us and uh, helping us promote Nordic. And when we're fighting these big companies like uh, TI and CSR and whatnot, uh, it's good to get some extra publicity out there and show and that. And the Indian, Indian guys too. And uh, Oh, yes. You fight them all. <laughs> we'll and take you're on fighting for Europe, basically. I guess we are, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. There's yeah. some other guys a little bit, no? But, yeah. Uh, there's ARM. There's ARM, yeah. Good friends? Yeah, but we have competitors in Europe as well, so of course there's always going to be... Uh, well, the wireless is a big, it's getting bigger and bigger and there's more and more competitors, so we have to keep innovating to stay relevant in this space. How big are you compared to the competitors and who are your big competitors, or you don't want to say? Well, it's not really a secret. I mean, uh, traditionally TI has been our biggest competitor. They're very big, they have a big presence in the market, they make everything from memory, MCUs, everything else. A lot of people pick the TI radio and because they already have a lot of TI experience. Uh, but these days we have a lot of new radios popping up. The Freescale NXP merger company is a company. Yeah, it could be interesting to see what's going to happen there. I mean, we have these dialogue guys, they make a pretty nice radio. They're also Europeans, no? Yeah, I think they're German or uh, something yeah. like that. So uh, it's a really crowded space and of course we have to innovate, so in pretty short time we're going to have some new products to show. Um, can't really talk about that yet, but it's going to be exciting. So what's going to be your next product? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> right. All it's right. going to be better than what we have today, I can say that. Cool. <laughs>